ESG funds are growing at three times the rates of non-ESG funds. So the, 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 the growth is explosive. But I would say that I don't think ESG is the solution for everything. Four of the seven best-selling European climate funds, so you know, a big majority of them, um, that are focused on climate, actually have the portfolio has a carbon footprint that is greater than a normal ETF or a normal benchmark. So welcome to the uh, latest podcast of uh, Norman Alec, where we're looking at ESG investing. And I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Jeremy Jenna from uh, Monaco Asset Management in uh, Monaco. Welcome, Jeremy. And perhaps Hi. you'd like to introduce yourself and tell, tell us a bit about the company. Sure. Thank you for having me. Um, so, yes, uh, I'm the CIO of uh, Monaco Asset Management. It's an asset manager based in the Principality of Monaco that's been there for 20 years. We manage about uh, 3.5 billion US dollars of assets spread amongst over 100 clients ranging from corporates, government entities, family offices, high net worth individuals, and so forth. Before joining Monaco Asset Management, I used to work at, uh, at a hedge fund and before that in investment banking. And I joined Monaco Asset Management because there was a there was an opportunity to do something uh, in, in wealth management. And three, four years ago, uh, we embarked into the, uh, the the fabulous journey of ESG investing, which I'm very keen to, to talk to you about today. Okay, well, thank you very much for the introduction. Can you perhaps give us a, a few examples of uh, ESG investments that you're looking at or that you've made without going into confidential detail? Yes, of course. The, 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 the chance that we have is that the industry has grown tremendously over the last three to four years. In assets, obviously, we'll, we'll talk about assets growth, but also in terms of the breadth of the products that we can invest in. I think most people are aware that you can find a, a variety of mutual funds and, and ETFs with ESG names, ESG labels, and ESG trust strategies. And this has been growing very rapidly. But what is very interesting is that now you have other sorts of investments that are much more targeted that are starting to flourish in ESG investing. For example, you have macro hedge funds that employ an ESG lens in terms of their macro investings. You have uh, fixed income funds that not only look at um, credit, but look at ESG characteristic and take an activist uh, angle to, to credit investing. Activism as historically been very uh, prevalent in, in equity investing, but you start to see that in, in credit. Um, and so it's interesting to see that now ESG is widening out in, ten, in terms of investment products, which means that you can have a wider impact, but it also means that you can diversify your portfolio and mitigate some of the single risk that we used to have with just ETFs and mutual funds. So it's great to see that this is, this is happening. And obviously, because of the, of the growth of the industry, it's very important to know what we're investing into. But at least the breadth of the product is now there to, to invest. And can you give us some idea of the size of the ESG investment market and the growth, and also the growth of uh, your share of uh, ESG product in your portfolio? Sure. I think the ESG... Products are now, uh, we're at the end of 2020, about $1.7 trillion worth of capital globally. And I think in 2021, we're going to get closer to $2 trillion. There was more than $25 uh, billion of ESG new products in, in Q1 alone. So I think it's, it's growing tremendously. From what I can tell, ESG funds are growing at three times the rates of non-ESG funds. So the, 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 the growth is explosive. Um, we may see a tapering of this explosion, and we'll come to that later because of performance lately, but also because of regulation. I think regulators are starting to look into some of the names and malpractices and labeling that we see in the industry. And it, this may put a break into this growth, but it's for the, for the better good. So um, it, it's been a good growth phase. And now if we get a bit of a stabilization, it would be good for the industry too. For us, 
we obviously starting with very little capital in ESG three, four years ago. And I would say that by the end of this year, it should represent close to 25% of our assets under management. So yeah, not only do we have clients that want to have some ESG uh, products in their portfolio uh, by conviction, by, uh, by thematic, uh, any other reason, but we also have now clients and multiple of them that want to have portfolios that are 100% composed of ESG products. And this is purely based on conviction. And with the view that maybe over time, over a few cycles, then performance can be as good as a non-ESG portfolio while still you know, making good and having a positive impact. So, and hopefully this share will grow over time. And I was going to ask you that, Jeremy, if we take the same asset class with the same risk profile, what sort of returns are you getting with ESG product compared to non-ESG product? And what are the expectations of your clients when they invest in ESG? Are they looking for the same return or are they willing to sacrifice a bit of a return? We seem to be doing good as it was. Mm. Yes, unfortunately, sacrificing return is, uh, is not something that most clients want to do. I think expectations should be that return should be similar Maybe not on a shorter term time frame, but over over a cycle. Um, so yes, doing doing good uh, in terms of impact, but also doing good in terms of performance is what most people want to, to see. Um, lately, I'll, I'll have to admit that because of fund flows uh, that have been exploding, and because a lot of ESG investing, I would say, has been concentrated on a couple of thematics that have been very positive the last few years, we could argue that. Over a shorter term time frame, I would say the last two or three years, ESG investing has sometimes outperformed traditional investments. This is because up until this year, um, industrial or oil and gas investments were doing very poorly. And as soon as you were excluding those from your investments, then you were starting to outperform benchmarks. So uh, as a short term time frame, performance has been good, but I would say that I don't think ESG is the solution for everything. ESG investing is not necessarily a recipe for you know, short-term success. There is risk. Um, there is risk in concentration. A lot of mutual funds and ETFs are you know, aiming to invest in what uh, in companies that score extremely well on an ESG basis. And they tend to be always the same companies and they tend to be in technology. And so there's been a concentration of capital flows into a, a specific sector which has done tremendously well pre-COVID, post-COVID. Um, but, you know, question mark whether that will be sustainable in, in the long run. Um, so I would say that while the recent outperformance has been good for ESG fund growth, uh, we should not rely on this outperformance going forward. And that's why I think finding products that diversify income stream and that diversify um, the, the risk and mitigate risk in the portfolio is very important going forward. And Jeremy, if I can just come back to the um, term that you use, ESG label, can you tell us a little bit about what that means, how it's defined, and how you can make sure that when you invest in an ESG product, it's really compliant, it's not just greenwashing, as it were? Sure. This is, this is a big issue in industry obviously as, as as per any nascent industry um there is good and there is a, a little less good out there um and and a lot of emphasis has been put on labels and there's a bit of labels everywhere french labels luxembourg labels it's hard to tell which ones are the good ones which ones are the bad ones having gone myself through the process of getting a label for one of the fund that we manage um there is tremendous work done at the onset but very little follow through once the label is granted. So it's tough to say how useful the label really is, <clears throat> but there is a study that was done a couple of weeks ago by Investment Metrics, and they found out that four of the seven best-selling European climate funds, so you know, a big majority of them um, that are focused on climate, actually have, the portfolio has a carbon footprint that is greater than a normal ETF or a normal benchmark. And so those funds, they claim that they are climate focused and the label is there to support it, but yet they 
the, the companies they own pollute more than the traditional ben benchmark. Oh. So it's really hard to say, and I, I, it's hard to say from labels and from names, uh, creative names out there, uh, which, one are, which ones are good or which ones are not. Um, the reason behind it is a lot of the industry is still transitioning. The, the, the old economy is transitioning to this new climate focused uh, e economy. And you would say that a lot of those funds, they buy into what the management is telling them. Oh, we're going to change this and we're going to change that. And this is our, this is our targets. But as passive investors, for most of them, um, it's hard to push for change and you take management word for granted. And I think this is very dangerous. And so I, this is why we at Monaco Asset Management, we spend a lot of time on uh, you know, studying the, the investment products we, we invest in and making sure that we always have products that pollute less than the traditional benchmark. Because you mentioned that you launched your own product or fund with an ESG label. Can you perhaps tell us what the procedures were for actually getting that label, that accreditation? Sure. Um, yes, we have a, a fund of fund, an ESG fund of fund that can invest across different asset classes. And our uh, philosophy is that um, we can invest in passive investments. We only have a few uh, activist funds in the portfolio. Uh, but we can invest in a few passive investments as long as those passive investments, so ETF, mutual funds, have a clear strategy and they pollute less in aggregate than a traditional portfolio. And the idea is you have a portfolio, a starting point that is polluting less. You try to put as much activism and thematic in the portfolio as you can. And in result, you, you'll be polluting less and hopefully having a bigger impact over time. So that's the strategy and the philosophy behind it. We use different metrics and, and service providers to monitor this performance and those uh, ESG metrics on a monthly uh, and, and, and quarterly and yearly basis. And we provide reports to clients. So it's very important for us to try to uh, explain to our clients how we avoid you know, greenwashing. In terms of the label, um, it was quite cumbersome at the onset. Um, obviously, we have to show exactly the process step by step how we and how to share our models. Um, we had to share a tremendous amount of information, which I think is totally logical and, and required. Um, and that was back in uh, May of this year. Um, and the label is granted for a year. So I assume there's going to be a review in one year time. But between, yeah. So which authority or regulatory party actually uh, gives the label? In this instance, it's a, it's a label based in Luxembourg, um, but, they're, but they're pretty much the same across geographies. I wouldn't pinpoint Luxembourg as any, it, it, is, it is considered as one of the good ones because of the amount of work they do at the onset. I think there's other geographies where um, it's a little easier to get the label. Um, but the, the, I would say the problem, or maybe one of the solutions going forward is to try to have periodic reviews and not rely on on a yearly assessment, um, because it's, I think it's important to monitor how well um, our funds disclosing and doing their work on ESG on an ongoing basis. And I think that's still missing in, in the industry. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great tool, don't, don't take me wrong. I think it's important. It shows how much work and how much uh, credibility a fund has uh, in the space to have a label. Uh, but I don't think it's a solution. And I wouldn't, I would tell clients, don't find too much comfort in using labels because it, it's not a solution for everything. And my last question, Jeremy, to follow up on that, if you were the person in charge of the World Regulatory Authority for ESG investing, can you just give us two or three ideas you'd like to implement to make the sector more compliant, more easy to get comfortable? It's that, that's a really tough question because as you know, on, on the investment side, we always want less regulation and less constraint. So uh, I'll be shooting myself in the foot in a way. Um, but, you should um, shoot yourself a little bit. <laughs> but no, I think it's coming back to the point we made together um, before, I think the, the infrastructure is there to have enough regulation, but I think it's making sure there is an ongoing checkup process and not rely on yearly and sometimes even longer uh, timeframes, just to keep everybody on their toes um, would be my first inclination. 
Um, so we, we have a good relationship with our um, custodian and administrator with whom we share our ESG data on a monthly basis so they can see how we track versus benchmarks. And it keeps us on our toes. It keeps also our custodian and, custodian and admin aware of where we stand versus what we promised to the clients. But I, I, don't, I don't think this is necessarily required from all uh, funds. And I think it's, it should be. So a bit more transparency and a little bit more ongoing, uh, I would say, checkups rather than the, uh, the, the, the yearly reviews would be, it would be my first answer. I think then, in, in general, the, the, the industry is going in the right direction. Okay, well, look, Jeremy, thanks for sharing those ideas and that presentation with us. And uh, we wish you all the best with your ESG investments at Monaco Asset. Pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me. Bye.